Tomorrow is the last date of my mobile recharge and I really want to continue watching all of my YouTube videos. So first, let me recharge my own mobile. Hmm. Now we are done. So this video is about how mobile recharge actually works. By the title and thumbnail, we are just going to deep dive exactly into deeper this. But first, we really need to understand how a router works. Now this is a TP-Link Archer the C6 2.0. This is a dual band gigabit router. All the ports are gigabit over here. Now you might ask, this video is about mobile recharge Then why this router is over here? Well, to really understand how mobile recharge essentially works, we need to really understand some of the key feature that this router really works. By understanding some of the key feature that this router really works, we'll understand some of the networking fundamentals. And by understanding the networking fundamentals, I will kind of really make sure that you and I are both on the same pace itself when it comes to understanding about how mobile recharge works because things will get a little bit here and there but I'll try to make this video as simple as possible. So first let's try to do a speed test over here. Now I have a 200 megabits plan over here so naturally I should really get a 200 megabit speed over here and as promised by my ISP I'm really getting about 200 megabits per second plan. And note, this is not an Airtel fiber, this is not Geo fiber. I'm really using an internet from my local ISP called Mutant System. They do have a fiber to the building itself, but from there, it is actually converted to the Ethernet itself. So I'm really now using my Ethernet internet itself. And now to just simulate the effect of data throttling, what I need to do is I'll just kind of go to my router, just log into my IP address of the router that is 192.168.0.1. I will enter the password and I'll just enter in my web console of the router itself. As you can see, I can really see all of the connected device over here itself. Now, for privacy reasons, the IP addresses and MAC address have been covered up. Now, let's come to the quality of service or QoS. What it essentially does is it really prioritizes how to really allocate the bandwidth to all of the users. Let's say if you have 50 devices that are connected to your router right now, you need to really prioritize that which devices should get higher speed or which devices should get a lower speed so that there is not much more congestion over here. And for our demonstration of data throttling, let's try to enable the QoS up to 10 megabits per second. And as you can see in the speed test result, I'm not getting enough speed more than 10 megabits per second. So what it really tells you that the data throttling is been just working absolutely fine as per our QoS is being configured. If you really want, you can just also block some of the devices. You can really enable the parental control. And I can also block some of the website which you really visit by using a VPN, <coughs> excuse me. But the problem really over here is that what I'm really doing is I am physically going to the web console of the router and physically changing the result. What it really essentially does is I really need to be in close contact of this router. What if there was a way that I could really remotely access this router? Now, although there is a website called tplinkwifi.net, which does allow you to do that. But for our case, if you really want to manage hundreds of customers, thousands of customers, in that case, our requirements become different. What if there was a way that this router had an API, which I can plug my, like say, Node.js back into it. Now, if you really want to know more about API itself and how it really works, you can watch this video by Hitesh Chaudhary up right here. That will give you a brilliant understanding about API itself. But API is generally nothing but a piece of software which is rented out by a company itself to other companies or a general public use itself. The best example of an API is Google sign up button. Now I'm sure that you have seen this button millions of times in your lifespan itself. Essentially, Google really knows that you are probably using Android right now. Google also really knows that you are probably using Chrome right now. And Google also really knows that you are really signed up with Gmail on the Chrome itself, which three of these products are being owned and managed by Google itself. Now, Google really says that instead of me really making you log in every time by filling up your detail and why don't I just lease out a product? Why don't I just lease out my sign up functionality to all the developers out there so that they can really make your life more easy? And this is a kind of really win-win situation for everyone out there because as a Google, you are now kind of really in the business of renting an API itself and that you can really make a lot of money with it. As a developer, it kind of give you a much more hassle-free user sign-up experience. And as a user on that side, you don't need to really enter password and you don't need to enter all of the detail. You just sign up with one click button and everything is being taken care of by the Google itself, which is pretty good. But come back to point where we, oh yeah, we want customization. We really want much more sophisticated programmatic access or Maybe we can really plug our own web application with an API itself by the router. But as we have saw that this router doesn't have any API, or maybe this router doesn't have any API itself over here. 
For that, we will need special enterprise custom grid router, which is compatible with any cloud architecture. Presenting you the cloud router or Cisco ASR, maybe it can be anything by Nokia, Huawei, Microtech, Arista, Juniper. There are a lot of companies who really are in the business of networking equipments. Now, unlike my typical consumer grid router, which is really meant to target millions of average consumers like you and me. So in that case, simplicity is the topmost priority. Customization is not. But when it comes to developing application and price grid, customization is the topmost priority. We don't give a damn about how the web console really look like. I mean, if it looks good, then that's a plus point over here. But now what it essentially allows you to do is like they have their own APIs. They have, their, let's say, all sort of customization, which you can really physically connect to your own web application itself. And by now using those APIs and customization ability, you can now plug your networking equipment with your own custom made web application itself. Or if possibly, if you don't have that much of coding ability, you can also use third party existing online software, which has been used by many ISP itself. Take for example, what I really saw about is Zonware, there is UCRM by Ubiquiti, Exidnet, and there is tons of other which you can just google out on there. This software really allows you to recreate the plan, host the plan, dynamically create a data throttling effect. You can just say that, hey, if this user really just exceed 100 GB of limit, just reduce the speed up to this over here. So it can create that programmatically. You don't need to do a lot of crazy thing over here. But all you need to do was is to provide an API access and give that software to really just programmatically interact with your device itself. So finally, now ultimately, let's try to answer one question that how mobile recharge actually works. Now, when you do a recharge on Geo itself, let's say if you really want to recharge a 555 plan, which essentially gives you 1.5 GB data per day for 84 days itself. What it essentially does that when you just send a payment through UPI, debit card, credit card, net banking, or any kind of payment wallet itself, Geo essentially verifies all of the detail that whether all of the payment was successfully done or not. From there, if the payment was successful, Geo really knows that which recharge do you really want to do. Whether you really want to do about 11 rupees recharge, whether you really want to do a 555. In this case, we have opted for 555 rupees recharge. Now, Geo will really forward all of this detail to its networking servers. In that networking server, they have the profile of millions of customers, which you are one of those. Now, what it essentially does that they will go and they will update your profile that, hey, this user really wants to do this kind of recharge for this kind of period. And it really sets all of the timestamp, expiry period and all sort of programmatic thing that they just really upload over there. And they also really just said that, hey, this user really wants 1.5 GB data every day for this period itself. And if they just really exceed that limit, just reduce the speed below. And this is how the mobile recharge actually works. Now let's take a step forward and let's try to answer that how Geo, Airtel, V or BSN as a matter of fact really knows that to which tower you're really connected to right now and what is your proximate location right now over there. This is the same problem where network administrator tries to really know that to which access point you are really connected to right now. Now you might have seen this kind of circular disk on the top of the roof of various hospitals, various hotels, various offices and complex. Now these things are really called as a Wi-Fi access point. And this Wi-Fi access point don't have any routing functionality, which we typically see in our modern home router itself. They just only emit the wireless signals. All of the routing, all of the functionality about handling, managing IP addresses, what is the data throttling, how should be bandwidth must be allocated and how should be QoS must be balanced is all being done at a central location itself. And a network administrator can immediately know to which access point you are connected right now. Since the link has been now established, it's just a matter of fact that you just fire on query and just try to search that which access point you are really being connected right now. And same really goes for Airtel, Geo, BSNL or V in matter of fact. And this really also explains the fact that why in old movies or let's say CID or crime patrol itself, the criminal really tries to switch off the phone before doing any crime so that his cell phone really remained disconnected throughout his criminal process so that the telecom operator won't be able to tell that where this device was or what was the proximity of this location at this point of time itself. But now the thing really is that I'm really explaining this all sort of thing in really simplified way. The actual things are really, really, really a lot more complex. And these things about networking and aren't really cheap. No doubt that Vai Motor Vai or Mukesh Ambani really invested 30 plus billions of dollars in creating a geo pan India itself. This is a lot of hefty business. And the logistics is just insane. 
scaling this thing up to millions of customer let's say 300 400 5 million hundred user base is not a really small joke it's a really like a big engineering task and i'm really glad that they are being just able to do at such good scale and provide a really superior user experience for you and me so that we can really enjoy all of the content that we really want over here all we need to do just like hey just press a button do a payment and then the very next moment itself the recharge is in our account itself and that's all what i have to talk about how mobile recharge actually works if you have any question queries some sort of suggestion on how this content could be really more better please let me know in the comment box below i'll be happy to get back to you i do have a plan on making about how the geo fiber or how airtel fiber actually works if you're really interested please let me know about it too till then stay connected and i'll see you next time